If you believe the universe only gives us what we're strong enough to bear, then the universe must think to raise a top is very strong indeed. Born in Sudan, Teresa has overcome extreme obstacles to create a healthy and meaningful life here in Canada. I have mental illness. Uh, when I come to Ottawa, I have uh, a bad news in my country, so I got to hurt voices. Her journey began at 14, when her family married her off to a much older man in exchange for many cows. Teresa left after this relationship became unbearable and returned to her family who were not pleased. When she later became pregnant and was abandoned by the father, her family performed a religious ceremony to curse the child who died at eight months old. Devastated, Teresa fled alone to Ethiopia and began to hear the voices that would much later be diagnosed as schizophrenia. Determined to start a new life, she immigrated to Toronto, but the voices made it impossible for her to work. She ended up in a shelter, then came to Ottawa to try and return home with help from the Sudanese embassy. But by this time, the war made it impossible to find her family. I want to go back to my country, Sudan. And then they told me, your country has a war. We cannot let people to go back to where a war belonged to. So I stay in Ottawa. Meanwhile, Teresa's condition deteriorated and she was taken in by the Shepherds of Good Hope. She was then referred to the Royal Ottawa's Psychiatric Outreach Team and the Canadian Mental Health Association. After starting psychiatric medication, Teresa's life improved dramatically. She moved to an assisted living environment and eventually her own apartment. When I went to the chapel, they find me a doctor. The Royal Ottawa nurse came, find me a doctor called it's scary, it's scary. Dr. Scary, and now I have Dr. Labine, and he wrote me a medication, so I feel better now, but I am still uh, heard voices. Today, Teresa is a testament to surviving a major mental illness. She takes her meds faithfully and follows up regularly with her community support worker. She's become a Canadian citizen, is learning English as her fourth language, and is active in the community, volunteering weekly, preparing meals at the Shepherds, and participating in the Royals' Schizophrenia Education Day. Most remarkably, Teresa makes giving to others a priority. Despite living on a disability income, Teresa saves $2,500 annually, donating $500 each to five different charities. This selfless gesture is her way of giving back to those that helped her recovery and continuing stability. Yeah, I give back money because I like to donate money to the Royal. It's Royal, it's a good hospital. Hell, a lot of people, sickness, mental illness. So I would like them to give them to help. The money I give to them to help their, them for their patient. The psychiatric outreach team member who nominated Teresa summed up best why she so deserves an inspiration award. He said, Teresa suffers from mental illness, but it's not this illness that defines her. When I see Teresa, I see the person who smiles when she doesn't feel like smiling, gives when she has nothing much to give. I see a person who has battled through bitter personal tragedy, learned a new language, and accepted a foreign culture to become a Canadian citizen. When I see Teresa, I don't see someone with a mental illness. I see someone I should strive to emulate. My country, I don't miss it. It has a lot of war and no food over there and a lot no no good doctors. This Canada is a rich country. I have a lot of food. I got a good doctors. Uh, we don't have, I don't get an award here. I don't get any disease, so I, that is the thing I like about Canada. I'm happy, but I'm happy. Thank you, Teresa. Your courage, determination, and generosity in the face of adversity are exactly 
what these Inspiration Awards are all about. My name is Teresa Top. You know who I am.